Formula One has come a long way since its gas-guzzling days half a century ago. It's hard to think of motorsport without petrol, but that's exactly why F1 is pioneering sustainable fuel, and they plan to introduce it into all cars by 2026. But why has Sebastian Vettel still been critical of Formula One's adoption of green technology, and could the sport be heading towards an all-electric competition? Stay tuned as we dive into all of the latest sustainability news in Formula One. First up, winds of change. Things move fast in Formula One, but even for a sport where cars are significant significantly changed from weekend to weekend, the target of 100% sustainable fuel by 2026 seems a little ambitious. It might sound strange to hear eco-friendly and Formula One in the same sentence, but that's the way things are moving. It's part of the new sustainability strategy that was introduced in 2019. Formula One wants to reach net carbon zero by 2030 and help the research of alternative fuels to help the climate crisis. The turbo hybrid era starting in 2014 was a step in this direction and was controversial at the time. Fans were angry about losing using the powerful sound of the V10s that were used during the Schumacher era. But the sport has moved on from those gas-guzzling engines and has been experimenting with technology like KERS that recharges batteries to be used later in a race. Ross Braun, who is the current managing director of Formula One, said, If we drop a fuel which has much less impact on the environment into those cars, it's a positive change, and we will be sending a strong message that this is a feasible way to go. Braun is excited because that technology will also work its way down into road cars and potentially make a big difference in the fight against climate change. At the British Grand Prix, protesters targeted Formula One by running onto the track during the race. They were advocating for environmental sustainability, but could the solutions actually be found in Formula One? One of the biggest campaigners for action has been Sebastian Vettel. When he took Nigel Mansell's Williams FW14B out for a spin at the British Grand Prix, he made sure that he did it responsibly. He went the extra effort to find an alternative fuel that wouldn't be as harmful to the environment. Vettel footed the bill for the hydrocarbon synthetic fuels that emits around 85% less carbon than regular petrol. Talking about the spot taking the first step, Vettel said, The technology is already out there, and it's something we need to focus on more and more, especially for motorsport. I think it can have a future, and for other forms of transportation, to bridge to the future. Vettel knows that it's an expensive technology to adopt, though. For the fuel that ran in Mansell's old car, it was about double the price of petrol. But with the recent news of his retirement, Vettel will be able to spend more time dedicated to environmental issues. He has revealed before that part of his dilemma of participating in the sport is contributing to environmental damage. He said, It is something I ask myself whether I should be racing in F1 and traveling the world. He has also been outspoken about how slow Formula One has been to adopt new sustainable fuels. And earlier this year, he protested both the Miami Grand Prix and the Canadian Grand Prix with t-shirts that had radical messages on them. He also became an ambassador of the Bees and Apples project to create new and sustainable habitats for bees. There's no doubt that whatever he does in the future, he will be a positive voice for change. Coming up next, who did F1 partner with to try and bring about climate change action? And why did Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel get told off for their activism? So don't go anywhere. Next, partnerships. Formula One keeps the wheels turning through advertising and sponsorship. So if they find a company willing to back environmentally friendly projects, it's a win-win for them. The recent announcement of a partnership with financial company Santander aims to do just that. Santander will fund a competition between innovators called the Santander X Global Challenge Count down to zero. The winning projects will be given free promotion on the Formula One website. On top of that, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars up for grabs. A representative from the company said, this agreement with Formula One takes that support to a new level, creating an opportunity for new businesses to join forces with one of the most innovative sports in the world and support the transition to a low-carbon economy. This is one of the most effective ways for Formula One to impact change, by bringing big companies and advertisers on board with their mission. They're also changing the way that corporations are thinking. And Santander is not the only one. Mercedes-AMG Petronas has become the first global sports team to invest in sustainable aviation fuel. That means that part of the team will be focusing on developing sustainable fuel, especially for air travel. That will include getting to races around the world and shipping cargo too. Talking about the project, Mercedes boss Toto Wolff has said, This is a topic that I think about a great deal personally as well as professionally. I fly a lot. The team flies a lot. If we must fly, then we need to find a better way to do so. And SAF is the best solution available to the aviation industry right now. Electric cars used to be the punching bag of motorsport. Any real fan hated the Prius and was suspicious about the rise of companies like Tesla. But technology
technology is changing, and more and more car companies are using electricity to power their cars. But could Formula One ever go fully electric? For motorsport, there is already a Formula E competition. The championship was started in 2014 and includes teams like Renault, Audi, Virgin, and Andretti. It offers much lower barriers to entry than Formula One and experiments with interesting street circuits all around the world. The last championship was won by Mercedes, but they have since sold their team to McLaren. Formula E has some big backers, and it is starting to be used as a feeder series for F1. But could it be overtaken by Formula One soon? And what does F1 boss Stefano Dominicali think about becoming totally electric? When asked, he said, We won't. We need to stay hybrid. This is a definite decision we've taken, and this is also good for the automotive industry. We don't have to take electrification as a world religion. For now, Dominicali is focused on the second-generation hybrid power unit changes in 2025 and then a totally new power unit in 2026. The idea of both those changes is to reduce carbon emissions and make things more sustainable. But do you really go to the racetrack to think about sustainability? F1 might be in danger of alienating some of its fans. When Mohammed Ben Salayem became the president of the FIA, he said that he was willing to take Formula One into bold new directions, and part of that is the environmental angle. This year, he brought together more than 700 representatives from all over the world to remind them that motorsport has a responsibility for sustainable growth and shaping the future. But when Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel voiced their support for the protesters at the British Grand Prix, Ben Sulayem said that they should stay out of it. Ben Sulayem has in the past said that motorsport is becoming too political and that drivers should stay away from activism while they compete. Ben Sulayem's main concern was how these issues could spill into the sport and impact the experience of fans. He said, Vettel drives a rainbow bicycle, Lewis is passionate about human rights, and Norris addresses mental health. Everybody has the right to think. To me, it is about deciding whether we should impose our beliefs on something over the sport all the time. But the FIA has since walked back the comments of its president and said that they support the action that drivers like Hamilton and Vettel are taking, but they need to try and keep protesting and racing separate. But when your whole life is dedicated to one sport, how can you hide it? And with Vettel revealing that climate change was a factor in his retirement, maybe it's time for all of us to think about the health of the planet too. He said, when it comes to climate crisis, there is no way that F1 or any sport or business can avoid it because it impacts all of us. Do you think that Formula One is doing enough to combat the climate crisis, or should the sport try to stay out of it? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.